Okay, glad it's been a while. Okay. Hi everyone. In today's video, I am breaking down my family's entire family vacation budget. Now, if you're new around here, welcome. My name is Lizbeth and I focus on teaching other moms how to budget better, invest easier, pay down debt, and still travel with their family. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. Okay, so I'm gonna be super honest. I am definitely a planner, possibly over plan. I've gotten better after having kids because things don't go as planned but I'm definitely a planner through and through. And I know that a lot of people aren't. So I'm gonna try to break this down as easily and simply as I can. Given that I am a planner, I don't want you to assume that when I go on vacation, I am also like budgeting along our trip or keeping track of our transactions. Like I don't do that. When I'm on vacation, I'm on vacation and I'm spending the money that I wanna spend. I am completely immersed in spending time with my family and having fun and eating all the snacks. So although I am a planner, I try to do all my planning before the trip so that by the time we're on our trip, I don't worry about the budget. Where I believe that this helps me the most in is that with all the planning I've done, I can come back, look at my credit card statement, pay it off in full, and not have to worry about having overspent and then being stressed about the fact that we went on vacation, we overspent on it, and now we're suffering the consequences. So that is my hope with this video, is that it shows you that it is possible to go on vacation and not come back and worry about the financial stress of it. We save up the money, we go on vacation, we pay it off and we do it again. So as I go through each category of our vacation budget, I'm gonna give you tips and tricks of how we maximize our vacation sinking fund and are able to take a few more trips than the average family because we budget, we plan and we maximize. And of course, if you have any questions about anything that I covered today, please let me know in the comments so that I can either answer it there directly or make a video going deeper into that topic. So I'm gonna break down our vacation budget into five categories, the flights, the hotel, the theme parks, the food, and miscellaneous. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's get into this. Our family vacation is this month and we're going to California specifically for Universal and both Disneyland parks. We are based in Texas, so we are having to fly from Texas to California, and there's two adults and two kids. The airline that I like flying domestically with is Southwest. I know they've been having some issues lately, but I'm hoping that they don't drop the ball when we go to California. <laughs> I first booked our flights in January of this year, and at that time, the flight from here to California was 11,125,000 points, per person one way. And from California to Texas, it was 10,353 points. Now I could have left it at that, I have the points to cover it, but I took it one step further and kept checking back the prices, even in points, for those particular flights. We had nonstop flights and the times worked out for us. So I did wanna keep those same exact flights, but if I could pay less in points, then I could save those points for a later flight. I did end up finding those exact flights for slightly less points. So all I did was rebook them that exact same flight and got credited the difference in points. So my Houston to California tickets ended up costing 10,739 points per person one way. And our California to Houston tickets ended up costing 10,121 points. Now, like I said, there's four of us. So all in all, I ended up paying 83,440 points. Normally with Southwest, you do have to pay the taxes, but given that I do have the Southwest priority card, which comes with a $75 annual Southwest credit, I was able to have all of those fees completely waived. I really did end up paying zero out of pocket for these flights. Moving on to the next expense that I paid with points, our hotel. Universal and Disneyland are actually not as close as you might think. As I was researching and planning for this trip, I realized that they're like over an hour away. And given that we are the kind of family that does rope drop, which means getting there first thing in the morning, I didn't wanna have to worry about doing an hour commute to either part. So I ended up breaking down our trip into two different hotels. When we arrive, we're gonna stay at a hotel near Universal. We're gonna to go to Universal the next day. And then the day after, we're going to drive down to Anaheim and stay at a hotel near Disneyland. 
So essentially we're doing two nights in Glendale and four nights in Anaheim. Our two nights in Glendale came out to 24,000 points and our four nights in Anaheim came out to 60,000 points. The total I spent for our hotel nights was 84,000 points. Now between saving on flights and hotels by paying with credit card points, this is where the majority of my savings comes from when it comes to our family vacations. Now let's get into what we're actually going to pay out of pocket. Theme park tickets are one of the bigger expenses for this trip and let me break down what we actually spent. Now, now, one of the main reasons why we're doing our trip in May is because my youngest daughter will be turning three at the end of June. So I wanted to make sure that we went before she turned three so that we wouldn't have to pay for her ticket. We're only going to have to pay for two adults and one child. For Universal, I went through Undercover Tourist and paid $349. I'm all for any kind of fast pass related stuff when it comes to theme parks, but I know my daughters are not going to be able to get on a lot of the rides at Universal. So I didn't feel the need to purchase their fast pass version. However, since we are mainly going for Super Nintendo World that just opened up, I did learn that we could pay for early entry for only $25 per person. So instead of any kind of fast pass, which is really expensive at Universal, I opted out to pay the $75 to get us an extra hour at Super Nintendo World. And because I went through Undercover Tourist, which is a travel site, I made sure to use my Chase Sapphire Preferred to get the extra travel points. That card actually currently, as of right now, has an increased offer from 60,000 points to 80,000 points. So if you're at all interested in that card, I do have a referral link. You don't have to use it. I'm maxed out at like five per year. So I'll leave it linked down below if I have yet to meet that five referral maximum. Next up, we have our Disney tickets. We are doing one day at Disneyland and one day at California Adventure. Given that Disney parks are a lot more family friendly and there are a lot more rides that my kids can ride, yes, I definitely added Genie Plus to that. So once again, I purchased three tickets per park with Genie Plus and that came out to $990. Now, one of the ways that I find to maximize spending the money at Disney is by using a card that gives me five times points at grocery stores and stacking it up with one of my local grocery stores four times fuel points promotion. If you have a Kroger or one of its related stores, this might be also available to you. But I end up getting four times fuel points purchasing these gift cards and then getting five times points through the credit card and really maximizing the amount of points and perks that I get for purchasing these cards that I'm gonna turn around and pay for Disney tickets anyways. Also planning on spending another $60 for three lining lanes for the Cars ride at California Adventure. Now, I do know that the price varies, but I think I heard that the maximum amount is $20 per person, and I would be getting it for me, my husband, and my oldest daughter. Now, hopefully it's one of the days that's a little bit lower and I don't spend the $60, but I definitely don't wanna have to wait in that line because I've heard that it's really, really long. So with all that, Universal, Disneyland, Lightning Lane, early entry, the total amount that we're spending on tickets and stuff is $1,475. That is the main attraction for our family vacation. And in between, I take those as rest days because we need a little bit of time to recuperate and be able to walk all day long in the parks again. I learned this the hard way at Disney World. So trust me, if you have kids, you want rest days in between. Let's move on to one of my favorite ones, food and snacks. Now I have a really big sweet tooth and I think I've passed that on to my kids. So sometimes that means that we don't quite need a full meal for dinner or something like that. I've noticed that when we've gone to Disney World, sometimes we're so busy and caught up with the rides and having treats and stuff that we end up skipping a whole meal. But in order to effectively budget for all the treats and all the randomness that comes with food, I like to account for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and always kind of over budget for those things so that I know that I have enough room in my food budget to comfortably spend and buy all the treats that I want during our trip. So I tend to break down every day of our trip into breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and literally go through and put a rough estimate of how much we'll probably spend. Here's what it pretty much looks like in the end, and I'm gonna point out a few things that I do on here. We are leaving in the morning that day and coming back in the afternoon, arriving here closer to the evening time. So I am accounting for breakfast as part of our trip, but I'm not accounting for dinner as part of our trip, because if we do eat out on our way back, 
it'll just come out of our normal eating out category for our normal monthly budget. Now from there, I did make one character meal reservation on day five of our trip. And I went online and actually looked at the menu, looked at how much it is. So I did the calculations and then I added a buffer. All in all, I think comfortably, we'll spend about $250 there. So it is definitely like one of the pricier meals that we're going to have. At Universal, we wanna do the Toadstool Cafe. And I did the same thing. I went through their menu, kind of looked at all the things that we would possibly want to get, including dessert. And I came out with about $100 of a budget for that. This is not to say that I'm going to be keeping track of what we're eating there and making sure that we stay under the $100. That is not what I'm going to do. This is just a rough estimate of how much I plan on spending there based on what their menu prices are. Now for the rest of the meals, the lunch and the dinners, I calculate based on what we're doing that day and where we're going to be. That also accounts for any snacks or treats we get. So I definitely tend to over budget for meals. When I added it all up, the total ended up being $1,185. And just for an extra buffer, I tend to add an extra 10% and round to the nearest dollar, which in this case ended up being $1,300. So that is what I'm guesstimating for our food budget during our entire trip. Finally, let's move on to the last category, which is all the miscellaneous things that go into a vacation that a lot of us tend to not think about. The better you can plan ahead for them, the less they'll catch you off guard when you get back from vacation. Let's start with the easy things like airport parking. We ended up paying $23.30. This is with discounts because I make sure to sign up for any loyalty program that is available. And in this case, I had a few days that I had for free for being being part of this loyalty program. Next up is the car rental. I had originally booked a car rental for our entire trip, which came out to like over $500. But what I realized was that when we're in Disney or in Anaheim, where our hotel is to the parks is a walkable distance. And from our hotel to downtown Disney is walkable. I realized that we're not going to actually need a car there. So what I ended up doing is getting a rental for about two and a half days for us to get it at the airport, go to Glendale, and then drive up to Anaheim and drop off the rental when we get there. The car rental drop off place to our hotel is only like an eight minute walk. Worst case scenario, we get a Lyft or an Uber and Uber there if we're too tired or don't wanna carry the kids and the suitcases all the way there. And I've made a buffer for that just in case. So because I did that, instead of paying five, $600, we're actually only paying $224.44 for our rental. Obviously that means that we're not gonna have a car that we're gonna be able to drive back to the airport. So I looked into my hotel's website and found that they do offer a shuttle service with a third party for $60. So I added the $60 to our budget, plus another $10 for tip, and that's $70 for the shuttle. Still cheaper than having the rental three more days. Now let's talk about souvenirs. I know some people are very big into souvenirs, especially when you're at Disney. I feel like they're known for all the different kinds of special edition and all kinds of things. I am not a big souvenir person. One of the little traditions that we've started is that we do get a pin from anywhere that we go. The only other thing that I might buy is a Pandora charm to put in my Pandora bracelet. However, I've done this in the past and I ended up losing my Pandora bracelet. So now I'm kind of weary of doing it again and then losing it again and all that money just kind of going down the drain. So I'm still debating on if I'm gonna do that or not. But other than that, I'm not a big person to buy like shirts and backpacks. I do budget about $100 per person for souvenirs. Now, when I added up the car rental, the airport parking, the shuttle and the souvenirs, it came out to a total of $717.74. So because I love to include buffers into everything, I decided to round that up to a thousand dollars. So if we add up all five categories, we have a total budgeted amount of $3,775. Why not add one more buffer here? I'm actually gonna round this up to $4,000 because I'd much rather have extra money than be stressing about not having enough. So tell me what you think. Is $4,000 too much or too little for a seven day, six night universal and Disney vacation for a family of four. And also, would you like me to do a follow up after getting back from vacation to give you the true numbers that we spent? And if I was even close to the $4,000 budget. The point of all this planning is that I can go on vacation and not worry about how I'm gonna pay for this when I get back. I'm not going to add debt to our lives because I wanna take this vacation. I wanna be able to do so guilt-free and knowing that I've made memories with my kids 
and not put our financial life in jeopardy because of it. And the best thing about all this is, is that because I budget and I plan for these kinds of trips, I'm still able to invest and pay down my student loans. It is the perfect balance for me and my family. Now, as a final note, I recently left my nine to five corporate job to become a full-time money coach. So if you've watched this whole thing and wanna get to the level of being able to budget, invest, pay off debt and still travel with your family and you're interested in having somebody work with you, motivate you, hold you accountable and help you make a plan that works for you, then feel free to follow me on Instagram, send me a DM, let's chat about it and maybe even set up a discovery call for free so that we can get to know each other and see if working together might be a good fit. Okay, I think we've had about enough number talk for the day. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy to be making YouTube videos again and expect more of them coming soon. I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.